Hi everyone, can we keep scaling large language models up and up all the way to human level AI? Or are there still fundamental discoveries to be made? This video explores the potential for large language models to be a cornerstone of AGI, particularly within the framework of heterogeneous architectures. We also dive into the promising new Mamba architecture, a novel approach with unique algorithmic properties. Keep watching to learn more. This video has three parts, paths to AGI, transformer attention, and next generation Mamba blocks. Part one, paths to AGI. At a really high level, there are lots of potential paths to AGI or artificial general intelligence. For instance, maybe we need to copy biology more exactly and technologies like spiking neural networks will be an important aspect of AGI. There's also been speculation even from OpenAI that AGI might consist of lots of agents talking to each other or agent architectures in other words. Some people believe that the scaling hypothesis will continue to hold all the way to human level AI, which would mean that current large language models, once they're scaled up enough, would naturally start to form AGI. And there's also a school of thought that heterogeneous architectures, which are basically the combination of lots of different algorithms or models, would be the path to AGI. We're going to focus on heterogeneous architectures in this video and talk a lot about transformers and Mamba in particular. The inspiration for this video was a post on the Less Wrong Forum, which was written by Roman Leventov about six weeks ago. I'll link it in the description below, of course, and summarize it for you now. Basically, until now, we've only had transformer architectures. Transformers underlie large language models and all of the modern AI systems that have been developed but now we're starting to have multiple fundamental building blocks. The post calls out the Mamba algorithm in particular. These architectures, such as transformers and Mamba, can be seen as building blocks from which you can put together a heterogeneous system that might perform better than any of the individual parts. Or not, since hybridization of transformers and Mamba actually seem to perform better than either alone, but ignoring that for the moment. These two models have different strengths. Transformers are really good at at episodic memory. That's basically what we call short-term working memory in humans. On the other hand, Mamba is really good at long-term memorization without the constraints of a context window. You might imagine other building blocks such as physics simulations, explicit system two reasoning, formal verification, etc. And actually this post makes a couple of predictions as well. Again, I don't know how accurate these are, but just to summarize for you, it hypothesizes that about five different types of core networks would be required, like transformers and Mamba, and maybe also graph neural networks, plus a few dozen classical algorithms like search and dynamic programming, plus about a dozen LLM tools like the physics simulation that we mentioned. That's a pretty long shot list, but importantly, it doesn't require an overhaul when a shiny new architecture is introduced. The idea is that even new architectures like Mamba are going to have different strengths and weaknesses compared to existing technology. And because you're using a heterogeneous architecture where all the blocks could be using different algorithms, you can actually leverage the strengths of each type of system combined together. And I think this is a key point. Tons and tons of investment has already gone into the transformer architecture. So any future AGI system would want to be able to leverage all that investment if possible. I think this idea of a heterogeneous architecture or a modular architecture is incredibly important. You could probably draw an analogy to CPU architectures. Until very recently, CPU architectures tended to be pretty monolithic designs. If you had a four core CPU and you wanted to make a six core CPU, you would have to redo a lot of stuff. That changed when AMD came up with their first Ryzen architecture. With Ryzen CPUs, each of the cores is essentially just a copy paste of the same stuff. This means that once they've tested and perfected a two core CPU, then making a four core, eight core, 16 core CPU is all within reach. Modularization is also a really important aspect of software design, but traditionally for more constrained domains like hardware, it was really hard to get modularization to work. I think it's very possible that modular and heterogeneous AI architectures could really lead to a similar explosion in the capabilities of our systems. Part two, transformer attention. 
As I mentioned, for large language models like ChatGPT or Gemini, the underlying technology is the transformer architecture. In fact, GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Transformers and large language models aren't the same thing. A transformer is a more general sequence to sequence transformation, and it's not limited to just language processing. All recent AI advances are based on transformers. They were first introduced in 2017 by Google in the paper titled Attention is all you need. The reason this paper has that title is that models for complicated domains previously tended to be recurrent neural networks. Recurrent neural networks have a state that's embedded inside it called the latent state that helps the model remember what it was looking at over the past X number of inputs. Then something called the attention mechanism was introduced and the key insight of this paper was that the latent storage state inside the recurrent neural networks was actually no longer necessary. The attention mechanism itself had enough storage and memory, so to speak, that the RNN storage wasn't needed. Hence, attention is all you need. I'll try to give a brief overview now of what the attention mechanism is. If you want to understand it at a deeper level, I highly suggest that you check out the Illustrated Transformer, which I'll link in the description below. A transformer consists of two neural networks side by side. There's an encoder neural network and then a decoder neural network. The encoder takes input like a sequence of words, for example, and produces this internal state. The state represents everything the encoder could figure out about the input. Then there's a decoder phase that goes and produces another sequence as output. So you can imagine, for example, that you're trying to translate from one language to another. The input tokens are going to be in the source language. The intermediate representation is going to be some kind of language agnostic representation of the meaning. And then the output is going to be the words in the target language. The basic problem is that the encoder, when it's seeing words and trying to produce the intermediate state out of those words, might well see words with ambiguous meanings. Ambiguity is a core attribute of human languages. If there was no ambiguity, then you could just use a series of simple if-then statements to figure out exactly what was being said. What do I mean by ambiguity? Well, for example, let's take the word it. Which noun does the word it refer to? The cat was eating the cheese even though it was green. This is a bit ambiguous. It could refer to the cat or it could refer to the cheese. Now, since you have some knowledge about the world, you know that green cats are really unusual, but cheese can be green. Although it's not desirable, cheese can be green. So you shouldn't have any trouble parsing this sentence and realizing that it is referring to the cheese. But syntactically, it could go either way. Here's another example from an excellent podcast, which is also in the description below. What do you think about when you think of the word rainbow? You might think about the splitting of white light, or the different colors that pencils can be, or the sensation or smell of rain, or lightning, thunder, and storms, or even luck and a pot of gold. Yet there are even more latent meanings of the word rainbow. For example, you might also think about LGBTQ individuals. And depending on the context in which you see the word rainbow, you'll probably be able to figure out which of those meanings was the intended one. I'll give you one last example, which is the word set, which I think I read at one point is one of the English words with the most possible meanings. For example, let's think about the set of all people who are all set to play a set of of tennis. There must be a tongue twister in there somewhere. Anyway, the attention mechanism allows ambiguity to be represented more accurately by looking at the context of each word. Specifically, it performs linear interpolation between each word and all the other words in the input. Linear interpolation in the vector space that words are mapped to, I mean. Like you turn the words into numbers first, and then you can linearly interpolate. If it turns out a word is highly correlated with some other words in the sentence, this will inform which interpretation should be selected by the encoder and put into that intermediate state. If you're a computer scientist, you might have heard, compare each word with all the other words and thought to yourself, that sounds like a quadratic operation, which it is, more about that later. Part three, next generation Mamba blocks. So we've talked about the transformer architecture, which has an encoder and a decoder and uses this attention mechanism to try to figure out what ambiguous words mean. An entirely different architecture called Mamba was first published on December 1st of last year. Mamba is based on what's called an SSM or a state space model. It's basically another type of deep neural network, like recurrent neural networks or convolutional neural networks. As you might imagine, 
imagine, like a recurrent neural network, a state space model has a built-in latent state of some sort. SSMs have been around for a while, but what Mamba specifically innovated on was mainly two things. They invented this so-called selective SSM layer, where the selection is basically analogous to the attention mechanism from transformers. And second, they have a very hardware aware implementation of this selective SSM system. That means it's highly efficient from the get-go. While the attention mechanism basically compares every word with every other word, which is a pretty expensive operation, to try to figure out what the word really means, Mamba uses this selection mechanism. The selection mechanism controls which information is propagated to future layers of the neural network. Basically, each input can either be passed along or filtered out. So the layer can basically drop words entirely if they're not that important, or it can really focus on the ones that it thinks are important. This is pretty complicated to implement because you no longer have constant time steps when it comes to future layers of the neural network because certain things get filtered out which means that the amount of time it takes to pass information through the neural network isn't constant anymore. This does have efficiency implications but those issues are dwarfed by the gains that you can get from this architecture. Specifically you can get linear time scaling. Quick Algorithms 101. You can basically look at how efficient an algorithm is by looking at what formula roughly describes how expensive that algorithm is based on an input of size n. One of the most straightforward complexity measures is called linear time, which is also written O of n. That basically means that you have to look at each element of the input once. If you're a human reading a book, for example, that's O of n, otherwise known as linear time. A much slower complexity is O of n n squared, which means that if there are n inputs, you have to look at basically each pair of inputs. This is more like trying to figure out which puzzle pieces fit together when you have a bunch of puzzle pieces in front of you. O of n squared is also called quadratic time. So when you're creating algorithms, you want linear time, you don't want quadratic time. It turns out that transformers have linear time inference, but quadratic time training. This is pretty bad. It means that if you wanted to double the sequence sequence length, like the context window length that an LLM can support, you would need four times the computational power. If you wanted to 10x the sequence length, you would need 100x the computational power. In contrast, SSMs such as Mamba have linear time training. This means that they would scale up much, much better if we wanted to continue scaling higher than we currently have. Furthermore, the attention mechanism isn't all that efficient to implement on current GPUs. The selection mechanism mechanism really takes the edge. So how does the selection mechanism really work in a bit more detail? Well, as I said, at any stage, you can basically choose whether to skip a token or look at it. If you skip an input token, you basically keep the internal state exactly the same. And if you look at it, you allow that token to change the internal state, not necessarily completely replace the internal state, but modify it. This means that really important information that the model picked up from its input can be kept in that state indefinitely. Like I said, transformers are really good at what in humans would be called episodic memory. That's your short-term memory, but it has a limited size. A transformer has no trouble recalling anything from its context window, in theory, but as soon as something goes past the context window, it will forget it entirely. With an SSM system, by contrast, if the selection mechanism skips over something, it's basically forgotten it completely. But like I said, important information can persist indefinitely. Essentially, an SSM can forget the the trees to remember the forest, instead of keeping every single tree and eventually running into the context window limit. The other important aspect of Mamba, like I mentioned, is that it has a very hardware aware design. The way the researchers implemented it is they took a couple of matrices that were pretty important and they decided not to store them in GPU memory. GPU memory is pretty fast. In fact, it's called high bandwidth memory for a reason, but because there's a lot of it, there are many gigabytes of GPU memory, it's still reasonably slow for the GPU to access, at least compared to things like caches or SRAM that is 
is much smaller but sits really close to the GPU cores. So in Mamba, important matrices are not stored in the GPU memory, they're actually stored in SRAM really close to the cores. The code takes a compressed form of the matrices from GPU memory and then expands it to form the real matrix inside SRAM, runs a bunch of computations in SRAM, and then computes modified weights and sends them back to GPU memory. And then it can throw away that matrix from the SRAM. The researchers would have needed highly specialized GPU code to access SRAM in this way. So it should be no surprise that the authors are actually optimization experts. They've also created one of the fastest implementations of transformers. In terms of performance, the SSM scan is faster than the best known transformer implementation. Yes, that includes the author's own transformer implementation. And partially because there's less state baggage sticking around, the SSM can achieve five times more throughput than the transformers can. In other words, given a certain amount of GPU computing time, you can chew through five times as much input as you can with the transformer. The quality is better too. In fact, Mamba can match transformers that have twice the number of parameters. So does this mean that Mamba is strictly better than transformers? Not necessarily. There's probably a lot to be gained from cross-pollination between the two techniques. So transformers will probably improve as a result of this research, but fundamentally one is essentially emulating episodic memory, short-term memory, and one is modeling long-term memory, complete with forgetting and abstracting of information. So there would certainly be a place for both types of models in a heterogeneous architecture. And remember, a key feature of transformers is they've already had billions of dollars poured into their research, and the things we've learned aren't going away. But SSM type architectures are going to be really important for long term memory and for processing inputs that have a lot of information in them. For example, trying to process videos. Throw in a few more architectures and maybe you'll come to AGI. Finally, in conclusion, we talked a lot about one potential path to AGI, which is heterogeneous architectures. This means throwing together a bunch of different algorithms that have different strengths so that they can act in concert. In particular, this would almost certainly include transformers and other deep neural network architectures that have different strengths, along with special purpose algorithms to solve things that neural networks aren't very good at. For example, physics simulations and formal methods and things like that. We talked a bit about transformers, the architecture that underlies all current large language models and a ton of other AI applications besides. And we talked about the attention mechanism that underlies transformers. The attention mechanism is basically a way of handling ambiguity and it lets the system select the best possible encoding of each word. Then the decoder knows what is really being talked about. Finally, we talked about state space models, in particular, the new paper called Mamba. Mamba uses a selection mechanism instead of attention. The selection mechanism can control whether each word is passed along to future layers of the neural network or filtered out entirely. This allows the network to forget information that's not that important and to keep alive any information from its past history at lesser and lesser detail as time goes on, of course, but it's a very good analog to long-term memory. The original post on less wrong that I mentioned assumes that if there's going to be a heterogeneous architecture for AGI, that two of those components would definitely be transformers and some SSM system like Mamba. If you liked this video, you're probably eager to find out when AGI might arrive. And so please check out this previous video that I made where I collate a bunch of different possible AGI timelines according to various different people and experts. It has my own estimate as well. And that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.